Hi, welcome back. We're now on video two, week seven, where the overall topic is sales strategies. But this particular video, we're talking about capacity planning and pricing strategies. So really important topics for your small business and ones that a lot of people struggle with. So we're here to help. All right, let's dig in. So capacity planning is a big part of your sales strategy because you need to understand how much capacity you have to deliver the products and or services that you're selling. So if you're selling a service, how many clients can you take on before you no longer have capacity to help other clients, right? And if you're selling products, capacity still matters because you still have time, especially if you're small and you're creating the products on your own. So example, I'm gonna tell you a little story, true story, true. We were helping this young lady who started a um, organic makeup line. And it was really primarily focused on like lip glosses and lip scrubs and lip oils and things like that. And she also had this like body butter type lotion that she was making really high quality ingredients, right? And she was making those, all the products herself and then packaging them herself and then selling them. And the body butter, when she was making that, to make a tube of it or a, a container of it, it took her three hours to make a tube. And so Corey and I asked her, well, or how many are you making at a time? And she said, well, just, just one. And so we said, well, how long would it, take you to make three to three packages of the body butter or two packages of it. And she said, the well, same amount of time, two, two hour, three hours. <laughs> okay. How long would it take you to make 20 of them? She's like, three hours. Okay. Why are you making them one at a time? And she legitimately had not thought about the value of not making them of making them making multiple packages at the same time. She didn't look at what it was doing to her availability and her own capacity. She was just looking at it from the perspective of I'm, I'm making them as I'm selling them. So they're really fresh for the customer, which is great. But if you're selling multiples of them across a week or a month, then just make more of them and free up your capacity, free up your time. Now, maybe you're not making your product, but you're still looking at capacity. So if, unless, you know, you're, the product is being made in one place and shipped from somewhere else and you're never touching them, you have to, you still, you still have to consider capacity regardless of how, what the situation is. If you're, if someone else is storing your product, do they have the capacity to store it? If someone else is, you know, making your product, do they have the capacity in their warehouse? So capacity is a very real thing, regardless of whether you are a product or a service, whether someone else is making the product for you or you're making it yourself. And where some, if someone else is storing the product for you or you're storing it yourself, you have to think about capacity and your time is part of capacity. So you want to be looking at that as well. <clears throat> Consider that in, and capacity matters because if you don't have enough X, fill in the blank, if you don't have enough time, if you don't have enough raw materials, if you don't have enough storage space, if you don't have enough money, like capacity matters. It matters when you're running a business and you need to consider it in what you're doing. So how you capacity plan is understanding everything that you are, that goes into your product and or service and how much time and materials does it take, right? So for us, if we're working on a growth strategy with somebody, we know that, that if they're an average client that we've worked with, then they require a lot of upfront time from us. That first three or four months, they're getting like sometimes like 20 to 30 hours of our time a week 
We understand that across both of us, right? So it's not 60 hours. It's not like 40 or 60 hours. It's it's 20 or 30 hours divided by the two of us, right? Between meetings and documentation and processes and reviewing things, putting all that stuff together, it's it's a big lift for us. It's a big lift for this for the business owner, but it's a big lift for us as well. And so we need to understand how many growth strategies can we work on at the same time? Well, it really depends on where they are in the cycle. It depends on um, how much work they have to do. So we need to understand all that when we're talking with clients. And that's part of my job as sales is to really understand if we're selling a service to this person, how much of our time will it take? And not because it's not worth it for us. It's because we want to make sure we can deliver and we don't want the issue to be on our side where we don't have the capacity to deliver on something that we've sold. So we really need to understand. And there's a lot of things that we do that we can reuse. We can reuse all of our like templates for strategies and, you know, the ideal customer avatar and all that stuff. So that's easy. And we have an onboarding process, but it's really digging into the work and understanding their business. So you have to understand capacity. It's very, very important. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, pricing strategy. Ooh, we love pricing strategy. And most people, I don't, well, I'm hoping that everybody puts a lot of thought into their pricing strategy. I'm guessing most people just figure out what's it cost me to make this. And then they make sure it's priced higher than that. But you also have to consider your time. You have to consider in some instances shipping. You have to consider the packaging for shipping, maybe storage. So you really, from a COGS perspective and COGS is cost of goods sold, you need to understand all of the inputs before you can come up with your pricing strategy. Right? So a pricing strategy is really just the method that you're going to use to arrive at a price for your products and or services to make sure that you are not losing money. Now, sometimes you're going to create a loss leader. So you're going to have something that will actually intentionally be priced lower where you're losing money on it. But that loss leader is used to generate a sale of something else, right? So you're not just going to sell everything as loss leaders or you're not going to be in business for very long. But that's the concept between behind a loss leader. Okay, creating a pricing strategy. Get your pen and paper. Hit pause. I'll wait here. Okay, you back. Here is how you're going to create a pricing strategy. So eight steps. Okay. So the first thing is understanding your buyer. <laughs> See where I'm going? Week two, ideal customer avatar. You've done it. You know your buyer. You know who you're selling to. You know who you're marketing to. So that is step one of your pricing strategy is really understanding who your buyer is. The second thing is surveying and talking with customers, right? So this step is important, um, but this can be very casual, right? So if you've got people in your network that would, you know, for us, we're small business, we focus on small businesses. So we just talk to people in our network to ask them like, hey, what sort of things do you need help with? Who are you most likely to reach out to if you needed coaching? Um, things like that when we were first getting started, because that helped us to figure out who our competition was that we could kind of do a competitive analysis on, which is coming up next. But it also helped us understand like what services are people offering and where, where do we fit into this niche, right? So it's a very important part of the process, but it's not like going out and like literally clipboard and you're like surveying people on like, Hey, why did you buy that kind of popcorn? It's, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about talking to either, if you're an existing business, then reach out to people who've bought from you that you have a good relationship from and just talk to them about your products and our services and the pricing. And if it's somebody, if you're new or you want to reach out to existing and you want to reach out to people in your network to have that conversation, do that, right? A lot of times people don't understand everything that goes into your pricing. So if you are, you know, a construction company, like home construction and you build fences, your, your customers, your ideal customers may not understand why your fences are so expensive. That's part of your job from the marketing perspective to show them the value of what you're doing so they understand and they're not questioning 
the cost. They're not questioning the price that they're going to pay because they see like, oh, they use the highest quality materials. And if I was going to do this myself, it would take me like 60 hours, right? So those are the kinds of things you want to understand. And that's why you survey your customers. You really want to understand their knowledge and why they're buying from you and why they're buying from their competition. Okay. Competitive analysis. You know who your competition is. If you don't, do a little research and then go out and see what products and services do they have and what are they charging and how are they selling? Are they selling in bulk? So if it's products, right? If they sell nail polish, for example, do they sell single bottles or are they only selling in packages of five or packages of three? Like how are they selling? Look at your competition, not only the prices, but how and where. Look at everything that they're doing because that's going to help you with your pricing strategy. If they're you know, white labeling or private labeling through someone else and that distribution is occurring. Like you want to know those things because that's going to help you understand if you're doing everything and your products are 100% made in America and your biggest competition's products are all made in China, you want to leverage the made in America thing, right? The people will pay more for something made in America, especially those of us who love America. So like consider that when you're talking about your pricing strategy and you're doing your competitive analysis. Now, market analysis. Are people aware that you exist? Is your brand, do you have brand awareness? Do people understand what it is that you do? Is there a need for what you're selling what in the marketplace, the products and or services? So this, you've also started to do a little bit when you did your surveying your customers or your network, but do the market analysis and really understand what do people want and what do people need? Next, round number five, for those of you keeping track, analyze and price. So take all of the information that you've gathered and analyze it. Look at the different price points that your competitors have, but look at why they have those price points. Don't just look at the price. If they're selling nail polish for $17 or they're selling nail polish for $7, understand why. How's it made? What are the ingredients? How is it on the environment? Is it safe for your kids? Really understand it. So don't just look at the price. There's a lot more to pricing than the number. Okay. Now you want to price it. <laughs> You've got all this information and you want to figure out your price. And one little trick here, do some research on the psychology of buyers, right? We price everything with a seven at the end. Two reasons. We like the number seven. <laughs> and two, people are more, more apt to buy if they see a seven than any other number. Now do research and don't just price with sevens because we price with sevens, although we are awesome, so you can follow us. But, but you wanna research and you wanna understand, right? 99 is better than, $1.99 is better than $2 psychologically, people are more apt to buy. It's weird. People are weird. Our brains are weird. We're wired weird. We all know that. Six, communicate value. We talked about this a little bit if, you know, when I was talking about if you're a home construction company, what's the value of what you're doing? How much time are you saving somebody by doing it for them? What's the value of the product you have? What's the quality that's being built into what you're selling them? Value, value, value. This is part of your marketing strategy, communicating value. And again, you don't communicate value by telling people, hey, this is valuable. That's such bullshit. Sorry, earmuffs, kids. You have to demonstrate it. Testimonials. What makes your product or service stand out from everybody else? All right, number eight, focus on exceptional service. Here you go. Honestly, people will pay, oh, excuse me. People will pay for really good service. We all know that. There are things that we pay more for because of the service. You wanna get as many testimonials as you possibly can. And the way to get testimonials is by having really, really good product and service. Just get the good testimonials focus on delivering service. Go look at some of the companies that do it the best. Nordstrom is probably the best known, but there are some other ones that do it really well. First Form. First Form is my favorite example of exceptional customer service. 
And I know we've got a couple of sessions on customer service inside of Foundation 52, but exceptional customer service is going to help you so much, especially with your pricing strategy. You can price more when you're offering, when you're delivering with service that just goes above and beyond. And that means having a really high performing team that's gonna help you deliver that service as well. So this all ties together, guys. And then finally, and this should not be a shock, get the testimonials. That's number eight for you. We've already talked about it a little bit, but don't be afraid to ask, deliver, develop a process for asking for testimonials. It's also covered in Foundation 52, how to do that. But that's it. That's how you develop a pricing strategy. All right. We're going to see you. Part three is all about adding value. And you already know one of the things I'm going to say. So we'll see you in part three of week seven.